They say that the problem with stupid people is that they don't know that they're stupid. And that saying actually rings just a little different here in 2020, where social media has effectively conditioned large groups of ignorant people to not only remain in their ignorance, but also makes them think that they can be their local neighborhood superhero. Now, like all sad stories, this sad story of reality that we're living in today also has a villain. In fact, there's two of them. Their names are media and media's evil stepson, social media. Let's go ahead and start with the latter. The algorithms on our social media platforms were designed to know what you like and what you'll react strongly to. With that information, they'll lump you into categories to make it easier to market to you. So for example, if you're a Christian who likes Christian content, you'll probably be seeing a lot of Christian-based content in your social media feeds. That's probably how you came across this channel in the first place. And the same goes for atheism, veganism, sports, or really just about anything else that has a market. Now, once they find that you're the kind of person who likes that kind of content, it's easier for them to know what kind of things that they could sell you. And more importantly, they know what kinds of thoughts that you'll buy into as well. It's a smart marketing tool and it makes it easier for you to find channels like this. But the problem comes in when you realize that we've all been assigned to certain digital echo chambers where most of what we hear today on social media will be from people who already agree with us. A consequence of this is that as time goes by, it inevitably makes our society more and more polarized by creating more separation between these digital echo chambers that they put us into. We'll eventually lose touch with the people that we disagree with and we'll just start to see them as caricatures. For example, I recently came across a video by a journalist who was a lifelong Democrat, but a few months ago, she decided to go to a Trump rally. Now during her visit, she was shocked that what she learned and believed about Republicans from all of her years in left-wing journalism simply just wasn't true. Here's a few clips from her video. I have been a Democrat for 20 years. Ever since I was 18, I have literally never voted for someone who was not a Democrat. And I still haven't as of this point anyway. But I made the decision the day before the New Hampshire primary to go check out the Trump rally in Manchester, New Hampshire. Now, every single person I talked to about this plan said, Carlin, be safe be safe. Like, and I'm talking about both people from the left and the right. And they, t they wanted me to be safe for different reasons. But I decided to go anyway. And I thought it was really important to go, not because I'm a Donald Trump supporter, because I'm not. I did not vote for him in 2016. I voted for Bernie and then I voted for Hillary Clinton. Um, but because I wanted to see for myself, I wanted to see for myself what was, this was all about. And frankly, I had been to, ev I had seen every major Democratic candidate and I thought that, you know, maybe I, you know, why, why not? Like what, what could possibly go wrong? The worst thing that could happen is that this was going to be a spectacle. And I, I had been able to go and actually witness for myself what was going on. So I went to this Trump rally and I discovered that these people that I had always perceived as being really like, you know, very bad people were really not. These people are not racist. They're not Nazis. They're not white supremacists. They're not whatever phobe you want to call them. They're just most of them, and certainly every single one I talked to and interacted with, are just average, everyday people that just have a difference of opinion about how to solve the problems in the country. They're not mean. They're not evil. They're not vindictive. They were incredibly nice to me. I even let it slip sometimes that, you know, I'm a, I'm a Democrat, you know, it's in PS. And they're like, oh my God, welcome. Good for you. They were so, so welcoming. I think especially on the Republican side, the Trump supporter side, is they're really exhausted by being called these horrible, horrible names. In the last uh, three days of my life, people on the right side, the conservative side, have fully embraced me and have said, oh my God, welcome. Thank you so much for what you said. It doesn't matter who you vote for. We're just thrilled that you have an open mind. Like it's been a, a wonderful response from the right. People on the left have vilified me, have called me horrible names, have gone after my business. I actually had to turn off reviews on my Facebook page because people I have never spoken to or never worked with are starting to leave really negative reviews about my the work that I've been doing for 15 years because I wrote an article they didn't like. They're, they're, I mean, I, I cannot even tell you the backlash that I've experienced from people that I had aligned myself politically with for 20 years simply for writing an article that said, Trump supporters are not Nazis, and I'm going to become an independent. Which side do you think I want to vote for right now? That's what happens inside of these echo chambers. This is made even worse once you realize that almost all of the major news and media outlets today are fueling the same echo chamber's ignorance about Christianity. A big part of this is political. One impression that they leave you with is that Christian is virtually synonymous with 
right-wing extremists. And by right-wing extremists, they're talking about a group of people that basically consist of the KKK, Nazis, Trump enthusiasts, and people whose sole mission is just to marginalize people by instilling injustice into this world. Now, in reality, it's true that Christians are still sinners and we all have our flaws. But overall, Christians aren't always what they're portrayed to be. In talking about how Christians are often portrayed, Scott Saul says, the statistic that 80% of evangelicals put Donald Trump in office turns into 80% of evangelicals are enthusiasts about a man who has been predatorial towards women, tells lies, is a racist, and all of the other accusations about him. There's this label that is assigned to the worst kind of caricature. He goes on to say, but in reality, Christians are on the front lines nationwide working towards racial reconciliation and justice. Christians are leading on the ground. We're not perfect, but whenever you see real repairs starting to happen, you will see Christian churches and communities and individuals in the center of the conversation. But Christians being against injustice isn't something that's only true today in America, but it's something that's also been true throughout history since the birth of Christianity. Christians have been fighting against social injustice since the inception of the church and brought about social change with things like child exposure in early Rome to the abolishment of slavery in the 19th century, all the way up until the hospitals and charities and orphanages today and so on. Now, there's no doubt that some Christians have overly identified with the political party, making these sorts of accusations easier to launch at us. I believe that in reality, we need to be Christians before we're anything else, and that includes being part of some political party. We want to be known for Christ, not politics. Now, the problem of echo chambers obviously doesn't just apply to one side of any debate. Of course, this goes both ways. But the truth is, Christians do care about those in need, and they do care about the oppressed and the marginalized, especially knowing that our Lord and Savior was also a social outcast and was a victim of injustice, injustice himself. So we do care, contrary to what these echo chambers would lead people to believe. Christianity has actually quite literally changed the world for the better in so many ways that you would never hear from those who give you a political caricature of Christianity. Go ahead and click on this video to see what I mean. But the next time that you hear someone claiming that Christians don't care about helping those in need, what are you going to say? What do you mean?